Hey guys, so I have recently purchased a new PC, and it would be my first purchase of a new PC that I've ever made, and spent a pretty good amount of money on it, and what I've noticed is it has some heating problems. Now this is the HP Omen 30L, um, it has a Ryzen 7 3700X processor, an RTX 2060, um, and it's a pretty decent computer overall. The issue is it doesn't have a whole lot of uh, ventilation going on inside the case and so what I thought I would do is install some fans and today we're gonna install a new cooler Spire maybe it's a Wraith Spire yeah it's either Wraith Spire or Wraith Stealth it's a uh, it's a pretty weak cooler and it doesn't even cover the entire surface of the uh, processor so I need something that's gonna cool it down a little more because I'm hitting some pretty high temperatures so let me show you guys We've got a, uh, now they tell us uh, core temp, uh, hardware info, these programs, for whatever reason, they don't read the temperature properly of these Ryzen CPUs. When I use core temp, it shows much higher temperatures. Ryzen's supposed to be some sort of rolling average. I don't know 100%, but what I have noticed is it runs really hot, and it runs unacceptably hot when I'm trying to render video, you know, doing different processes that take uh, maybe all eight cores and they're running at high load. So I'll give you guys, show you guys what's going on here. We got a video here, it was shot in 2.7K, it's Harrisburg, a little bike ride. Um, now what I've noticed is I can set render speeds in, this is DaVinci Resolve, this is the free version so it's using mostly CPU. Um, I can set the render speed to 10 or 25 frames per second and keep the temperatures down, maybe 85. But watch what happens. No one wants to throttle their own computer, so I don't want my renders to take longer. Watch what happens when I play it on maximum. We have it over here. We're going to start the render now. And let's just watch our temperatures climb to unacceptable levels. That's 93. Now the maximum is supposed to be 95. It's been about 10 seconds now and we're about to hit 95. And it's probably still climbing up. But it only goes to 95, so you can hear the fan ramping up. It's gonna get louder than that. It's and it's still it's not cooling. It's not doing enough. It's gonna thermal throttle. It's just it's all bad stuff. So we're gonna stop this because I don't like running it that hot. So I went out and picked up this uh Noctua Chromax. Uh, this is supposed to be a super quiet fan and a uh, pretty decent heat sink. So, if this performs as expected, I should be able to bring down those temperatures probably at least 10 degrees. And I need some extra ventilation in there anyway. The weird thing about HP and all of these proprietary brands is they have weird motherboard setups, and they have proprietary motherboards. So, in this case, we have a Ryzen processor that is set up on a motherboard for an LGA heatsink. LGA Intel heatsink. So, what we're going to have to do, and luckily, Noctua includes all the hardware. I guess most manufacturers probably include AMD and Intel hardware. But we're going to end up having to use the Intel brackets instead of the AMD brackets, despite the idea, you know. If you have an AMD processor, you usually have an AMD type motherboard. There are videos out there. If you watch any of those Omen 25L videos, there's a guy, I think his name's Dan Cam, you know. I'm not sure how he pronounces that, but uh, he has a lot of videos on the Omen 25L, and you'll be able to find all, pretty much all that information will go toward the 30L. I think the only real differences are the fan on the front and the glass panel on the front it's kind of extended out so yeah check check out his channel if you're looking for additional information because i did find some of this information actually that's where i decided to get this from because it does fit it's kind of a smaller case you know i guess hp to save money just went with these like stock type coolers and uh you know they do good enough they do good enough for everyday use some gaming that might utilize mostly graphics card but if you're doing very cpu intense processes like rendering 4k video you're going to want something that's a little stronger than 
the stock cooler that comes with it. You can go with a liquid cooler, they're totally fine, um, but a 120 millimeter radiator on a liquid cooler is only going to perform as well as something like this. So we're going with this because there's less chance of a pump failing, I don't have to worry about replacing it in 5 or 10 years. Um, yeah, and I could add another fan. It gives extra ventilation in there. It's just overall, it's I think it's a little more simplistic and it works about as well, sometimes better than the liquid coolers. So we're gonna go ahead and install that here in a minute and uh, take a look at what happens afterwards. Gonna be installing this guy, this cooler, right here. So we're gonna be installing this like this, and you can switch orientation whichever way. This would be your uh, intake. And exhaust through here so I could mount it upwards and I might eventually but for now we have an exhaust fan right here so we're gonna mount it like this and so to take these out you're gonna need either a star or it looks like you can use a flathead or a star star nut star bolt yeah or some like star screwdriver uh, I can found I can use a hex if you get the right size so I'm just gonna do that I have a bike tool here And as you're loosening these, you'll hear a little pop. Now this next part, it will take a, uh, it takes a little time sometimes to get these loosened up. I did just replace this, so it might be a little better. But just keep slowly twisting back and forth. You'll eventually get it off. Oof. Like how loud that was. So that's the stuff I just installed, that's why it's so, so but you can see how it just doesn't even cover the top of the chip. So this new one, much larger. It's gonna cover the entire thing. Should be really nice. So, well, we might be able to use this fan though. I may very well I might pull that fan off and try to mount it on top or something. But right, we've got two uh connectors here, so they'll easily connect and hey, why not? I mean, this thing can use all the ventilation it can get. So, if we're gonna clean this off. Oh, look at that weird imprint. Look at that. What's going on there? Beautiful. So, this is my first new PC, and by far the fastest PC I've ever had. This moved from a i5 750 from like 2010. It's crazy. But that thing was overclocked. I think at one point I had it about 3.9 gigahertz. Then something started overheating and just get random shutoffs. I think it was a little beast, it's still here. I ran a GTX 970. Where I just uh, had a splurge. First time I ever spent like a thousand bucks on something. Other than a bike. I once spent $1,300 on a bike. I'm just broke, man. You know? Sometimes you're just broke. Yeah, that's good enough for me. This is here. This should be enough for one or two applications, I believe. Enough thermal paste on there. It's supposed to be pretty good. Um, <laughs> nice little not too bad. Just stick that on. Uh, this we've got for an additional fan, so you can put a fan on the other side, which is a good idea. Extra airflow and it improves the uh, heat dissipation by like five ten percent. And this is a low noise adapter, which I think just helps run it at a lower voltage or something. Not entirely sure, but yeah, putting this on there, I guess, like reduces. It's max or something. I'm not sure. I might not use it. I'm not worried about noise. I want to do this the proper way, so I'm gonna. You guys are gonna get to see how to take this motherboard out. It's not too complicated. You just gotta remember where things go. You gotta make sure to save all your screws. <laughs> know where they go. Easiest way to do this is take a few pictures. Um, the way it's set up now. Get your camera. Snap a shot on this side. This side. Get the whole thing. Just get pictures so you know where everything lines up and goes into. Show it nice and clear and uh, you know proceed from there. Really just need references to go back to to make sure you have everything set up. In the end I think we got 10 or 12 connections, about 8 or 10 screws, there's a couple around the graphics card, 
There's a couple extra things in here. This is a, like, bracket, I guess, stabilization bracket. Don't really need it with this tiny card. Also include one here. This is probably just blocking up airflow, so I'm gonna remove that. But you guys get to see all this in a second. So this mounting bracket we're gonna get rid of. Just don't really need it. Um, don't really have the proper tools here. So there are lots of things to disconnect. We've got fan, we've got uh not even sure which what is this for? This might I don't know. Um, yeah, we got LED stuff more like fans and let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve it's like twelve connections plus the graphics card and then we should be able to unscrew this and pull it out That's a clean, huh? All right. Let's get at it. We start by disconnecting all the connections. So right down here, you got 24 power pin. 24 pin power. It's fine. And let's see if we can get that out. It's like some beasts. And what we like to do is keep all your connections nearby. So you can just slide them over. You don't have to be fiddling around trying to reroute things. Let's keep all these down around. This has to stay to the right side, so there's something interesting. It pins there. I'm gonna make sure that's stayed to the right. Take a close up photo of that. <laughs> so we got whatever this is for, I'm not sure if we got a fan. Got this guy up front. Two little boys. Little baby guys. This guy right here. I'm just gonna leave these in order. So you got one, two, three. Just leave them in order. This boy. Yeah, I guess it just pushes in. I hate not knowing how to disconnect one of these. It's scary. This guy, it's a little different. You got these two little connectors, they got like little micro connections on them, so it's just one little like stabby thing. So you can pull these or you can disconnect the card. I'm gonna disconnect the card because it's easier than getting those back on. Alright, I got it. This guy you should be able to just Screw right back in then. So next step, <laughs> pull all these guys off. One at the top. These are all the same. I probably don't screw all these in just to see what's right. Let's take them all out and uh, oh, sorry. get all these little connections out of their IO shield. We're gonna wiggle it and pull it this way. Should be able to pop out one Just gotta make sure I'm not connected to anything else. Here's your old one. Made out of plastic, so. Oh, there you go, man. Now, you can take this off. 
so that's easier to work on. I ain't too worried about it. And it's not glued on. It's got a little sticky stuff on it. So Alright, so that was pretty stressful. Uh, word of advice, guys, don't try to use anything, even a credit card, to try to pry this thing off. You don't have to. Um, you can see where I pushed against this. I actually ripped a tiny piece of solder off this connection on the motherboard. I don't know if this thing's going to work. Uh, I was stressing out pretty bad. Uh, don't, do not try to pry with anything underneath this. You don't have to. Basically, you got two pieces of sticky tape, and this thing sits on top of it like this. And when you go to pull it off, just pull by the corners. Pull by the corners. Keep going around. Just keep pulling up a little bit. You're gonna use a hair dryer. Warm this up a little bit to warm up the heat. But just keep pulling by the corners. You'll start to hear like a. <laughs> it will sound like a tearing noise. It was like tearing paper or something, but you keep pulling by the corners, you'll be able to see the adhesive start removing. And keep going around, loosening up. It only took me about three or four minutes. I don't really know which way this is supposed to go. Same way it's supposed to go this way, but it doesn't really make sense either. I don't know if it really matters. There are any screws or bolts here, so. Just see. Let me see what we got here. It's been instructions. So we'll do it like that. Why not? The spacer's on. But, uh, it's a graphics card, so it's going to go in like this. We want ventilation out this way, so we want the fan to be mounted on the side. Wait until they stop. Don't use excessive force. I see no reason to use excessive force on this. Just gotta give them a good hand tightening. And from there, I believe it's a pretty simple install. That's gonna go on like this. You have to take the fan off to get down to the screw, but there's a screw here. So I'm right like that. We want it back. Got to make sure everything slides back to the IO shield. It's going to be quite tight. You always wires it too. It's moving. It's so long. So it's open. Alright. Go. Is that a place to put some screws back in? I don't know if these screws are just around anything. I don't know if they're going to be secure. Yeah, that's not going to be secure. I don't want to fire those layers just like it works. Gosh, I don't want to Hey man, 50 hours a week. They want to be at work overtime this weekend too. We have 58 hours. I mean, lifting boxes. It's not as bad as like. Oh, that's just constant. I don't know how to sleep. I don't want to break anything. Well, it's not that bad. It's just two hours a week. It's rough. Too bad and stuff. The other thing is like, it's like computers. Keep running. Pray runs. Like the heat just pray runs. It probably keeps running because heat is working to cause electronics to just change physically. Start plugging stuff back in. Let's go to the right side, leave those left pins uncovered. Get this guy back in right over there. Graphics card, so the connectors. Hard drives. This is power for hard drives. Or power and data, I guess. 
This big guy, not even sure. I think it's like front IO or something. Put that puppy in. These guys, remember, red. Be to the left. Uh, I'm not sure if it matters which one it connects to, because I think these are both just OED. I hope so. Um, this guy. Oh, look, there's two of them. Oh, this guy goes over here. How about that? Put that on. There's a fan right there. Top connector. And another fan. Can't wait to drink a beer. Well, let's just hope this thing powers on. Then I'll drink a beer. So I think. I think that's all our power connections for the board. Put that big boy in. And let's just hope there's nothing hanging out. So <laughs> you never know, man. Forget to put in a CPU fan. Something here. Not sure what this guy's for. What's it for? I don't know. Let's look that up. I think we're good. So this guy you got a connector here. Now you can use this. Where is it? This, the uh, low noise adapter, you plug it into here and then you plug that, yeah, you plug it in through here to there. I think that just reduces the voltage or something so your fan runs slower or quieter. Uh, we want this to max, like maximize its usefulness, so I'm not going to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is take the fan off, make this... Work with. It's got two thick, two little clips that pop off on the side. And make sure you remember which way. This is how we're gonna mount. The fan was over the pop, pop side that sticks out more, but you can install another fan on the other side at some point. That's good to go on, just like that. So, next step. Apply thermal base now. This is something that everyone's gonna argue about. Um, don't need a lot. They say it's pea size. Uh, you saw how much I put on last time. It was a little more than pea size. So, I'm going to go for, I don't know, some, it's probably, even that's probably a little much, but, hey, I'm sure this thing's going to work a lot better than the last one. Right. That's that. This guy right on top. Don't really want to wiggle it around once we get it on here, so get it basic. You gotta push down on this pretty hard, apparently. There you go. So, let's get this even. Until they stop, I don't use excessive force. So. I'm basically going by spring compression. That one's about all the way in. Boys, we got a new CPU coolly installed. Pray this puppy fires up. That's it. Let's go around this way, I guess. Yeah, that's okay. The fan has got plenty of space, so that's good. Let's go off. I think this is mounted a little high. These are, uh, yeah, these little rubber bits are meant to suppress noise so you don't get any vibration. So you want to make sure those are fully against the heat sink. So make sure those are lined up. Basically, just make sure your fan's lined up. There you are. Look at that. We'll plug this puppy right into the CPU fan. Clean, but hey, what can you do, man? What can you do? It's a very hard bend. Let's get 
this guy out. Let's get this guy in. Pop in. Ooh, I didn't like that crunchiness. Cracking into pieces. So now, please don't turn me on. I'm gonna burn up. Yeah, we're just gonna put one in there. I'm not very worried about this coming out. Let's see, it's pretty stable. I'm not worried about that either. Um, that one connected here. In there. Oh, okay, we have two. Two separate pieces. I'm sorry. has to stay together. There's two connectors there. One little tiny like two prong one. Those all stay together. It's a form like an eight prong connector. If you all know anything about these, I don't. Uh, I just saw that and wanted to make a note. I think the rest of this is good to go. This is it boys. Well, I got a beer for the occasion. It's the moment of truth boys. Here we go. I have to let everything boot up and see what happens. I did technically damage the motherboard. Alright, alright. We got a BIOS. We got Omen. We don't have a BIOS. We don't have a BIOS. We just have the Omen screen. Alright, let's see what we're getting here. Okay. Oh, yeah. I had to move everything. So, alright, so it starts up. So, this is great. Wow. I've never seen this below like 38 before. So that's insane. Ugh, oh, that is wonderful. But this is gonna be the moment of truth. We're gonna run this at the max. Is it? Yeah, I have it set up max, so. Let's see what happens, here we go. Last time it took about 15 seconds to reach 95 degrees. I expected it to reach pretty high, but let's see. Going up. Much more slowly. Clearly much more slowly. Wow. So we would have usually hit 95 degrees by now. That's awesome. Because normally it takes about 20 minutes to render this video. And at maximum speed it looks like it's only taking about 5 or 6 minutes. It would not experience the same sort of uh, thermal throttling. Uh, now, from what I've heard, I think, uh, yeah, Linus Tech Tips uh, covered this computer or, or something similar to it when uh, they did their secret shopper thing. Uh, the power supply that's in here, I guess, or maybe it's something with the motherboard, isn't quite strong enough to run this processor at 4.4 gigahertz. So that's why you're seeing it at 4.1. Um, either a better power supply or a better motherboard would probably run it higher, I think, is what's going on. I'm not 100% sure about that, so. This is maxed out, but dude, we are still at 76 degrees. And it's cooling, well, okay, it's still climbing. But it doesn't seem like, I mean, we're not hitting 95, we're not even hitting 80 yet. This is wonderful. So this, I'm obviously happy with this. Um, you could do a water cooler as well water cooler setup. Uh, you would mount the radiator up here at top. It does come with a bracket that I took out, but you mount to that bracket. Uh, I didn't go with that because I've heard these are just as good as a 120 millimeter radiator water cooler. Water coolers look better, but this is easier to deal with. Um, gosh, I can't believe how much better it is. Look at that. It is still going up, but this will be done rendering in about four minutes and you know I doubt it's gonna hit 95 so this is this makes me happy this keeps everything cool I feel so much better about this computer now we're probably gonna add a fan down here or a fan at the top this thing is quiet I haven't even heard it wrap up yet super happy with what's going on here we, what, we drop down so yeah there you go man I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, 
you know, hopefully you uh, got something out of it. Hopefully I didn't forget to reconnect something. Please don't use anything to try to pry the back plate off. Just keep pulling around the corners very slowly, all around each one, you know. Just keep going around. Eventually you'll start loosening it up. Use a hair dryer and, uh, you know, you can probably heat it up and get it done a lot faster. But it only took me one or two minutes after I did it, so keep that in mind, you know. Just don't get frustrated. It's an easy job. Uh, yeah, if you guys like this video, you know, feel free to subscribe, like it, and uh, hope to make some more. Thanks. Nice.